Hi everybody, it's Desiree Dennis, your friendly neighborhood spirit medium. And today I want to talk to you about how you can prepare to communicate with spirit. So over my years of teaching spirit communication, I've had many people tell me that they receive messages from the other side during their daily life, but that it tends to happen at random times, at times where they don't feel like they can control it. It just happens to come in. The message just hits them that maybe they will receive a smell of their loved one's perfume around them, or maybe they'll get a really strong gut feeling that they should go a certain way or they shouldn't go a certain way, or maybe they just know something and they can't explain why they know it, or maybe they receive a clear audience message of specific words from one of their spirit loved ones. But what I've heard over and over again is I love getting messages from spirit and I want to receive them more in my life. And I just don't know how to consciously sit down and connect with spirit. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. So over the time that I've been a spirit medium, I've started to develop a four step preparation process that I use before every single one of my readings. And I do this as I'm sitting down, as I am readying myself to connect with spirit. So I'd like to say right away that this is my process. This is what I have found works for me and I want to share it with all of you. But as always, if there's anything I say that does not resonate with you, or if you want to modify this process I'm about to share in any way that fits you better, please, please feel free to do so. The key to communicating with the other side is to be in the best possible energetic space to invite the spirits in. You want to be calm in your body, mind, and emotions. So these four steps help me to arrive in the best possible energetic state for spiritual communication. So let's start by listing the four steps. Step one is clearing. Step two is grounding. Step three is opening. And step four, the most important step is intention. So I'm going to break down these four steps for you today. And as I go, I'm going to try to tell you a more visual way that you can do the step and a more feeling based way that you can do the preparation step, because some people prefer visualization and some people just like to feel it. You may also want to combine both if you want to prepare in all the possible ways. Step one, clearing, has to do with clearing your auric field, clearing your energy of any thoughts, emotions, excess energies that you no longer need, that might accidentally create some interruptions in your flow that might make it more difficult for you to receive the spirit's messages. So to do this, to clear myself, what I'll generally do is try to take a few deep breaths. I'd recommend about three deep breaths. And with each inhale, breathing in positive energy. And as you exhale, letting go of any self-limiting beliefs you might be holding, any stress from the day, and just allowing that energy to go down into the earth. And as you're doing this, um, some people like to visualize that there's some kind of beautiful healing waterfall over their head. And that waterfall is just rushing down and helping to clear their entire energy field and leave it sparkling 
and shiny and ready to connect with spirit. I will say right here that sometimes before you're ready to communicate with spirit, if you've had a really hard day, you might actually need to do a little bit more for yourself than just a couple of deep breaths. You might actually need to take 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour to walk in nature or do some yoga or take a healing shower, literally in the physical world, to help you to be in the most receptive place to communicate with spirit. If you're feeling like your energy is really all over the place, you're having a lot of chaos in your life, you might need to take some extra time to clear yourself before you're ready to connect with spirit. Okay, so the second step that I like to do is grounding. So grounding is the process of connecting your energy with the earth below you. The earth is a wonderful resource for spiritual communication. I like to say that the more grounded and rooted you are in the earth, the easier it is to expand upward to spirit. So I cannot overemphasize the great power that grounding has in spirit communication. So again, um, I will try to tell you a more feeling-based way and a visual way. Um, the feeling way that you could ground yourself is to actually take a moment to send gratitude to the earth, to feel the earth below you, however you might be sitting or laying down during your spirit communication process. And I also would like to add to that that in addition to grounding to the earth, what I've been thinking about recently is that you also want to be grounding into the current moment. I find that spirit communication is the most effective when you're very present in the moment. And many times when I'm giving a reading, it's like the rest of the world doesn't exist for a little while. And I'm just focusing on what does it feel like to be here in this moment, connecting with the spirit. So, Grounding with the earth and grounding into the present moment by really being aware of your surroundings. If you'd like a more visual way of grounding, one thing you could do is actually imagine that you have energetic roots that are growing out the bottoms of your feet or the base of your spine into the earth. So that's another possibility if you would like to use your imagination a little bit more to create that sense of grounding. <laughs> okay, quick stretch break. Whew. All right, go. Okay, so our step three is opening. So the first method of opening that I'll share with you is going to have to do with spending some time focusing on each of your chakras. And if you're not familiar with chakras, that is completely okay. There are other methods that you can use to open, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But if you are familiar with chakras, then here's what I would recommend as your opening. So if you've watched my previous videos, um, especially the one about the metaphysical senses, then you will remember that the chakras are like mini satellites that help you to pick up on energetic signals from the other side. And so I recommend that taking time to focus on each of your chakras one by one gives you the opportunity to broaden those satellites, to help those satellites to become more sensitive to spirit communication. So I would recommend working your way from root to crown, starting with the root chakra, and visualize, if you'd like to visualize, each chakra growing and expanding. If you'd prefer to just feel it, you can try to actually feel the sensation of each chakra 
growing and expanding broader to help you communicate with spirit. This is a really good feeling in my experience and it really helps you to feel very open and aligned and ready to communicate. The alternative way of opening, or I should say the additional way of opening, would be to take a moment to focus on gratitude. I'm probably going to be talking about gratitude in a lot of my videos because the spirits have really emphasized that it's such an important way of cultivating your spirit communication. When you're grateful, it automatically puts you in an open and receptive state of being. So um, I would really recommend that even if you are visualizing the chakras, that you also try to take a moment to just sit and be open and to focus on gratitude and that this will help to put you in a receptive space to communicate with spirit. Okay, drum roll please. Step four, intention. We'll talk about intention now. So I would say that if time was short and you only had time to do one of these steps, step four, intention, is the most important step to do before you connect with spirit. So intention is the process of stating to the spirit world your reason for connecting. And you can do this out loud with your words, or you can do it in your own mind. I would say from my experience, I prefer stating the intention out loud. Um, so if that's possible for you, that's what I would recommend. But saying it in your own mind works just as well. So there are four aspects to an intention that I would recommend including. So the first part to the intention is to ask to be surrounded in love and light. When you do this, it creates the sacred protective energy around you and you are ready to communicate with the other side from this beautiful, loving, light-filled, nurturing place. The second aspect that I would ask you to include in your intention is to call in who you wish to communicate with. This could be your higher self. This could be your spirit guides. This could be a specific loved one on the other side. If you're not sure exactly who you want to communicate with, you could ask for a group of beings. So you could say, I call in my spirit guidance council or my spirit guidance team or what I often say is I call in my higher self spirit guides, master teachers and loved ones to create a sacred space around me and to speak to me today. And if you're doing a reading for someone else, then what you would want to do is ask for your own guides to help you and to also ask for your clients or friends, guides to join you. Okay, so the third aspect for the intention is to ask for all messages to be delivered to you in the highest truth. The spirit world must respond to the energetic vibration that you put out. So when you ask for truth, the spirits will meet you with truth to the very best of their ability. And then fourth aspect is to communicate gratitude to the other side for all of the wonderful messages that they have to give you and for joining you today. And so um, I'm going to say now the intention that I like to say before my readings, but I really encourage you to take what I just said and create your own intention with the words that really resonate with you. Universal life force energy of love and light, thank you for surrounding me in a healing white light and unconditional love. I call in today my spiritual guides, master teachers, 
higher self and loved ones on the other side to create a sacred space around me and to speak to me today in the highest truth in this dimension and reality. I am very grateful for all of your words of love, guidance, and wisdom today. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's an example intention. But I'm going to leave a little template up here that you could look at um, and that you could take a little index card or a little colorful piece of construction paper and take a moment to actually write out what you would like your intention to be. So that'll be my little homework for you is to take a moment to sit down and create your own intention because this is something you can use anytime that you want to communicate with spirit. Okay, friends, so to review, what we were looking at today is a four-step process that you can use right before you want to connect with spirit, and you can make this process be as short or long as you would like for it to be. You can modify it as you would like. You could change the order. Whatever feels right to you, I just wanted to give you an idea of some things that might be helpful to prepare your energy to connect with spirit. I'm going to make a part two to this video where I'm going to lead you through this four-step preparation process. This will be like a template or an example that you can see how it works and then you can modify as you want to whenever you do it on your own. Okay, everybody, I'll see you in part two and I'm very excited to find out what kind of messages you receive from all of the loving beings that are helping you out on the other side. I really hope that this video was helpful and it was so much fun to share my four-step process with you that I've developed over time. And I'm excited to think that it might help some of you to have your own conscious, deliberate communications with spirit. So that way you can communicate with your guides anytime that you'd like to. Yay! And so these four steps that I use help me to arrive in the best pop. <laughs> the second aspect to include is, <laughs> I only do this all the time. Um, mm, okay. The second aspect 